Hello guys, Sakus to you here and for today I'm going to show you on how I was able to create this interior rendered image using SketchUp, Lumion, and Adobe Photoshop. For those of you who would like to download the SketchUp and Lumion file for this particular model, I had it posted in my Gumroad website which is called NDL3. You can download the SketchUp and Lumion file for free. The Lumion version used for NDL3 is Lumion 10, while the SketchUp version is 2020. So here is the SketchUp model for NDL3. It is a master bedroom with a modern and rustic design. There is a cove ceiling in the middle with fiber optic lighting. A small office area near the entrance hallway with some engine art murals on the east side wall. The bed is located here and there is a sofa beside it adjacent to the room's balcony. For the starting focal point where we would capture the rendered image, I chose to put it on the east side of the room. With this decision, I had to push the east side wall further back. This is so that we could set the focal length higher when editing the captured image in Lumion and we would be able to see more of the room. This is what the captured focal point would look like if we moved the east side wall back. And this is what it looks like if we do not move the wall back. There are abstract paintings on the hallway with wall accent tiles. I like to play around with the texture of the tiles and make sure that they are uneven with one another. There is also a niche separating the wall tiles with the fixed drawers. For the flooring, it's like a wooden monotone tiles and there is a carpet here beneath the bed. And that is pretty much it for the SketchUp model. Let's now export the file and choose 3D model. We are going to convert this to a Collada file so that we could import it into Lumen later. This is important since we might want to use some of the textures used on the SketchUp model when editing in Lumion. You can find the folder for the textures near the Colada file after exporting. Let's now open Lumion. I am going to import the Colada file that we just made earlier. So here is the imported Colada file. Let's now start by adding the lights. The reason why I like to start off with the lightings is so that when we are editing the textures for the materials, we would be able to distinguish the amount of glossiness of the material due to the light reflection. For some of the materials with surfaces that have sharp edges, I like to add a bit of weathering edges effect. This is so that we could see a bit of glossiness bounce off the edges of the material. The color scheme for this interior design is mainly monotone. So for the entourage outside the house, I reduced the color saturation of the trees. This is so that the color of the trees won't overpower the interior design. I also added more furnitures here at the front. I just want to make the room a bit more cluttered. Let's now click the camera icon. I already captured two images and edited the rendering effects for one of them. The focal length used for the captured image is 31.4 millimeters. So here are the rendering effects that I used for this image. First, I used the God rays effects. Decay should be 0.4, length is 1, and intensity is 1.4. After the God rays, I used the skylight effects. Brightness should be 2, saturation is 1. Skylight in planar reflections and skylight in projected reflections should be on and render quality should be ultra. After the skylight, I used the print poster enhancer effects. Enabled should be on. After the print poster enhancer, I used the lens flare effects. Streak intensity should be 0.6. Streak rotation is 1. Streak count is 9. Streak dispersion is 0.6. Streak falloff is 2.7. Bloom amount should be 0.3. Master brightness is 0.3. Anamorphic streak amount is 0. Ghosting amount is 0. Isolate bright pixel is 0, halo amount is 0, and lens dirt amount is 0. After the lens flare, I used the analog color lab effects. Style is 1.7, and the amount should be 0.2. After the analog color lab, I used the sharpen effects. Intensity is 0.3. After the sharpen, I used the color correction effects. Temperature should be 0.1, tint is 0.2, vibrance is 0, brightness is 0.6, contrast is 0.5, 
0.5, saturation is 0.9, gamma correction is 1.1, limit low is 0, and limit high is 1. After the color correction, I use the exposure effects. Exposure should be 0.6. After the exposure, I use the hyper light effects. Amount is 71.8% and enable in preview should be on. After the hyper light, I use the shadow effects. Sun shadow range is 156 meters. Color is 0.3. Brightness is 0.1. Interior exterior is 0.5. Omni shadow is 0.9. Shadow correction is 1. Shadow type should be normal. And soft shadows and fine detail shadows should be on. After the shadow, I use the sun effects. Sun height is 15.8 degrees. Sun heading should be negative 98.2 degrees. Sun brightness is 1. And sun disk size should be 0. After the sun, I use the reflection effects. Reflection threshold should be 25 centimeters. Preview quality is high. And speed ray reflections should be on. For the edit reflection planes, I simply selected all of the materials which are glossy and reflective. After the reflection, I use the global illumination effects. Sun amount should be 0.4. Fall of speed is 0. Reduce spots is 0.1. Sun max effect distance is 10 meters. And preview spotlight GI and shadows should be on. After the global illumination, I use the sky and clouds effects. Position is 0.5. Cloud speed is 0. Master cloud amount is 0.4. Low clouds is 0. High clouds is 1. Cloud direction is 0. Cloud brightness is 1. Cloud softness is 0. Low cloud softness removal is 0. Sky brightness should be 0.5. Cloud preset is 1. Cloud high preset is also 1. Overall brightness should be 10. And that is pretty much it for the Lumion rendering effects. Let's now render this image. Let's use the print size or 3840 by 2160 so that the image would be able to handle the post-production process well. Here is the result of the rendered image made using Lumion. And let's now proceed with the post-production. So let's open the rendered image in Adobe Photoshop CC. Click the background layer and let's change it into layer 0. Then press OK. After that, press Ctrl Shift A to open the camera raw filter. Let's set the vibrance to plus 7, saturation to plus 10, the haze would be plus 23, clarity is plus 90, and let's set the texture to negative 10. After that, let's adjust the settings. We are going to lessen the black elements on this image as well as the highlights. Alright, this is good enough. Press OK. After the camera raw filter, let's add the Gaussian blur effect. Hold Alt, then drag the layer 0 down. A layer 0 copy should come out. Then drag it above layer 0 without holding Alt. Change the normal setting into soft light, then adjust adjust the opacity to 35%. Go to filters, then select blur, and under the blur effect, select Gaussian blur. Radius should be 5 pixels, then press OK. After the Gaussian blur, let's add the high pass effect. Press Ctrl Shift Alt E. A layer 1 should appear above layer 0 copy. Then press Ctrl Shift U. The layer 1 should turn black and white. Change the normal setting into overlay, and set the opacity into 25%. Go to filters, and select others, then select high pass. Radius should be 10 pixels, then press OK. Let's now save this rendered image. Quality should be 12 and maximum. And that is pretty much it for the post-production process. Here's the difference between the rendered image with just rendering it with Lumion and after applying the post-production with Adobe Photoshop CC. I hope that you've learned something new from this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.